because we're not just for me to solve all those problems. Uh, my name's Charlotte. I'm an IBCLC. <laughs> I've been supporting families with breastfeeding for about five years. Um, I've only been an IBCLC since uh, January, uh, and in that time, I've I've supported you know hundreds of families in various different ways. Um, so just very quickly on that, Charlotte, because you've said obviously it's took you five years. Yeah. So somebody understands yeah. what it actually takes to become an IBCLC, can you just give them a bit mm. of a background? Because I think one of the things that people don't realise is th the amount of study and the work that yeah. has to go in yeah, absolutely. To, to doing what you're doing now. We're not talking about a health visitor, you know, God love them and all that. I'm not talking about that. We're talking about very, very niche, specialised. Yeah. So I don't come from a medical background. Um, I do have a science degree. I, I have a psychology degree. So I've always had some interest in uh, brains and development and behavior. Um, I had to do 14 health science courses. Um, I think wow. two of them were actually included in my degree. So I've managed to tick those off quite quickly. So that was kind of around uh, child development and child psychology and counselling skills because those were already obviously included in my degree um, and then I had to do biology, sociology, um, had to do a whole course about medical terminology and health and safety and all that kind of stuff. Um, you have to do 90 hours of specific lactation education um, and you can do that either in a course or by going to uh, conferences and getting SERPs, which are just like credits basically that say how many hours you've been learning for. And um, you have to do a thousand hours of face-to-face uh, -face support with families. And that's really challenging to do uh, as a volunteer. Um, but luckily I've, mm. I've made myself very much <laughs> open um, to people locally here. Um, I trained as soon as I could as a peer supporter. Uh, when our children's centre closed down um, its breastfeeding group, I was furious <laughs> and really, really upset and said, well, we can't, we can't just leave it. We have to do something and took it on myself. So we now have a group that's uh, in its fourth year, which is really popular. And we have uh, two other branches of that group. So I did lots and lots of volunteer hours with, uh, first of all, the NCT, who are, who are trained with and then my own group which is uh, breastfeeding friends um, I do pay support online as well with breastfeeding yummy mummies which now has over 60,000 global members so it's a huge wow. network um, and a couple of years ago I actually got a job working locally with families and babies who are a charity that provide breastfeeding support and got to go into people's houses and go see people in the hospital and really kind of help care for them from you know the day that they had their baby right through to sort of six weeks they would have that continuity of care through families and babies um and so it really is years of study isn't yeah, it yeah absolutely and and it's it's not just study it's passion it's not a job that people can just train for you have to be mentally and, and emotionally prepared for it because it's it's something to me that's more than just work it's not just a job it's it's almost like it's a necessity for me to do this I would do it whether I got paid or not and I do very much give lots and lots of my time for free and actually always say to people who who can pay me you being able to pay me for the time that I support you means that I can go on and support other people who perhaps don't have that money but still need that support um, and I think that continuity of care is really important and it's something that's really lacking in our healthcare system and I don't think that's down to anyone in particular apart from the government <laughs> and that would be a conversation <laughs> all of the day. I'm sure you will be very aware of how I feel about um, funding cuts and uh, lack of services especially in maternity and personal care and breastfeeding um, and just in, through society in general, you know, we have um, we've had 20, 30, 40 years of very, very aggressive formula marketing um, that's impacted the way women feel about their bodies and how they feed their babies. And it's yeah. difficult to make an informed decision if some of the information you're getting is from an unbiased, is from a biased resource rather than from people who want to care for you and, and help you reach your goals. 
interestingly when you say that um up until when i actually started going to nct classes i always thought i was going to form the yeah. because the idea of my boobs <laughs> do you know what i mean yeah a baby being on my boobs yeah that was like a really strange yeah. concept and I couldn't quite get my head around it. And it was only when I started really finding out how good it is for baby yeah. and how, you know, I can stop some of the health issues potentially that I've got yeah. getting past to my baby and all these amazing things. I went, hang on a minute. This is something I need to Absolutely. do. Absolutely. And, it gave me a sort of like um, a driver mm. to kind of like go right okay I've got to do this because I've got so many health issues and I don't want my children to go through this and yes okay there's no guarantee mm -hmm. but <laughs> you know there is a bit of a chance that it might make things that a bit better mm -hmm. but that was only because I paid privately to do the NCT classes yeah. and I was lucky enough as part of that to actually see um, an IBCLC within it and actually do a proper breastfeeding um the session yeah. um whereas most people aren't in that position to be able to do that no and and i have a huge problem with that <laughs> i think mm. for me with with breastfeeding it was very much it's what i'm going to do i didn't really know much about it um i at the time was very much like um into kind of natural living and i had a quite strict vegan diet that was mostly raw foods and mostly whole foods and i was quite conscious of the things that i was putting in my body and not all of that was through my own choice so i won't go into detail with that on this video but at the time it was just this is what i want to do and what i feel like i have to do and what feels natural to me i'm gonna have this lovely home birth and i'm just gonna breastfeed my baby and that was it anytime any of the midwives asked me about feeding as well i'm just going to breastfeed him and they would kind of just tick a box and say that's great and then that was it <laughs> there was no you weren't actually told how to do no, it you just thought no, i'll just go on want to learn how <laughs> should we teach you how to do it or there wasn't really any and and i can't fault my actual midwives who cared for me you know throughout because they were brilliant um I think they thought that because I was so well educated and so um, kind of well informed about home birth and so determined with home birth and done all this research and was so like this is happening and you were just all going to do as you're told <laughs> they were like it's going to work that's fine <laughs> and I think they translated that into what would happen personally as well that I was just completely informed and that i knew what i was going to do and that i was doing my own research and you know I, I can't fault them for for feeling like that if that was the case but i do wish somebody had been a little bit more these are some books we might recommend or these are some of the web pages that we recommend looking at because when it came to it i had no idea what i was doing and I bet you didn't even have any nickel cream, did you? <laughs> Nothing. Because you probably didn't even know what it I was. I think the first week after he was born, I must have spent hundreds of pounds. I didn't even have enough like maternity pads because I'd, I'd had no idea how much I was going to bleed. I knew I was going to bleed, but I didn't realise the volume of blood that I was going to continue to lose mm. <laughs> for a few weeks after he was born. Yeah. And I was like, oh my God, I don't have enough pads. I was buying cloth pads because I wanted to save money in the long run and didn't want to put more plastic in into the environment because right up until i was pregnant i've been using a moon cup so i've not, not used pads for years i, was like, I don't know what i'm doing <laughs> i was buying <laughs> hoodies with a little flap that i could breastfeed in and bamboo pads and all kinds of stuff and and all all i really needed was somebody to sit with me long enough and I had some fantastic peer supporters who came around and, you know, I, I wish they could have sat with me day in, day out. <laughs> that was the main issue was that I couldn't take up all the time that I needed. And that's not their fault at all either. They were brilliant. I just mm. felt like because I'd struggled to do it and I really needed their help that when they were gone, I couldn't do it. It was that idea that I could only do it when they were there. And I couldn't translate what they were saying to me into anything real for a really long time yeah. um, until I 
went to see luckily a lactation consultant who ran a free group that turned out to be a five minute drive from my house and um, she's retired now um, but I feel so incredibly lucky that I had that resource available to me on my doorstep um, and at that, that point I'd already been topping up with formula because Leo was tiny he lost a lot of weight uh, he lost a pound in the first three weeks of his life so he was very very and he was, he was born wow. small he was six pound four so he was he was tiny anyway so he didn't have the weight to lose um, and his chart kind of goes yeah. like this and then it goes like this. oh god as soon as he started eating formula his, his weight went up but after three days of giving him 70 mils of formula every three hours which is what I was advised to do I was hardly breastfeeding him and was like it's not quite what I wanted to happen like what's going on here mm. um and just went to the internet which is the the only place I've ever been able to rely on <laughs> for where do I go for help and I'd, I was in some breastfeeding groups and um somebody mentioned to go to Kath's group in Middleton in Leeds and I went and she waited right to the end of the session to see us and she spent a really good amount of time talking me through why he wasn't attaching well and a, you know a feeding plan going forward and debunking a lot of the terrible information that I'd been given and just caring for me which made such a huge difference at that point in in my journey that's that she listened and and she was probably one of a very small handful of people that I actually felt had understood where I was coming from completely so that's why I'm so driven to do this I had a very traumatic breastfeeding journey in the beginning um we ended up combination feeding until Leo was about seven months old and, wow uh, he breastfed till he was three and a half <laughs> so that's incredible to go from <clears throat> you know to go from that to wow that's amazing actually at the beginning I was just like I don't know if I can actually do this and three months in uh, me and his dad split up and I moved home and moved back into my old tiny box bedroom with my mum and my baby and was just like oh I don't know what I'm doing again and had some ongoing support from um some other um breastfeeding counsellors um somebody i like to call a friend now suzanne who basically was just really real with me and she said at this point you might always have to supplement him and that's okay because if you'd have had what you needed at the beginning then you wouldn't have ended up where you are now but you are where you are now and it's better to be realistic about where you are now and then you can make peace with it <laughs> and she was like but yes you you will still be able to breastfeed <laughs> and when he you know what that's amazing that you that's amazing that she did that yeah. because that is right Ugh, mum guilt that is that's the, horrible. It, it's the most i think horrible. it's one of the things that just eats us up alive yeah. um that was the video i put out on friday actually on, on that because we just exactly what you just said there because that would have probably been eating you yeah, up going i can't believe every, that i've not been thing. able to do what i wanted to do yeah. and for someone to go it's okay yeah. You just go, oh, yeah. oh, it, it's okay. Yeah, she's you know, not being so hard on yourself. And and it never came across to me like she was giving me permission. It was never like it's okay. You you can do what you want. It was just, do you know what? You might always need a bit of supplementation, and that's just how it is. And when yeah. you start him on solids, you can probably reduce the formula. You know, he, you know, by this point, it was about four months old. She was like, you got two months to go. See how it goes you know keep expressing keep breastfeeding the fact is you are breastfeeding him you know and mm. if you want to keep breastfeeding him then that's all you have to do just keep going and we kind of found a sweet spot between breastfeeding on demand and topping him up with formula um, and express milk i'm one of those people that doesn't respond very well to a pump um i'm Mm. fairly confident that if things had got off to a really good start in the beginning I would have had a full and plentiful milk supply for him but um as as things went you know those first three weeks were so uh, important for establishing that early milk supply and he wasn't feeding well at all um, my milk supply just tanked and I suffered as well with postnatal depression it wasn't oh, feeling very well it was quite a traumatic <laughs> early life for us both um, yeah. that transition into motherhood was not easy for me 
um going back to that mum guilt thing it, i've often felt like oh i don't know if i've done the right thing and there's nothing i can actually do about it now because i've got this baby <laughs> and, I, and yeah. I was like why I, I love him but why don't i feel like one of those women in hollywood who loves their baby like like they're floating on a cloud all the time and they're like oh it's the best thing that's ever happened to me i was like i know in my head that he is like i'm absolutely in love with him but i'm also terrified of everything <laughs> i'm terrified of holding him i'm terrified of feeding him i'm terrified of being a mum. i don't know how to be this person and mm. it's only over the years as i've done more research and worked with more families and done different types of training but you know that that transition period has become so much more um prevalent you know in, in what you see with families that it's not instant normal. for some people it is for some people they're instantly into motherhood and they just crack mm -hmm. it but for lots and lots of us it's a huge transition you kind of grieve your old life alongside celebrating your new one <laughs> There's lots of yeah. emotions and it's very complicated and, and messy. And I, I, I have spent a lot of time explaining that to new mums that it's okay mm. to, to feel a bit angry and a bit sad that it's not quite what you thought it was going to be, but you will find a rhythm and you will find a way and you do love your baby mm. and everything will work out. You've just got to, take each day as it comes I bet there's so the many people me. watching this now yeah I bet there's so many people watching this now that when you've just said that to them it's probably just made them just kind of go oh yeah thank goodness because that's what they need to hear yeah. and it's, it's a that's huge transition so you know it's like any other major change in your life but actually this one is permanent <laughs> and it's it's yeah. indelible yeah. You can't give them back <laughs> you know it's very you know very difficult to sort of come to a point where you're like actually this isn't for me and um i'm, I'm not going to do it and i think because there's so much guilt over you know parenting and 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 we do have mums that regret having children and that that's not talked about enough i don't regret leo at all i absolutely love him i worship him he's going to be the just no woman will ever be good enough for that boy because i worship him to death <laughs> but I'm also kind of like there were times when I thought I've made a really bad decision for myself here because <laughs> I don't know what I'm doing and I'm really struggling and I'm, this isn't coming easy to me and I still have those days where I think I have to work really hard at being a mum especially being a gentle parent um, and being you know really responsive to him because I have a very short fuse <laughs> and my default <laughs> mental state is knackered i'm always tired and now obviously but i feel like we would be very good friends you know <laughs> no nope. have you frozen no nope. it says it's been paused should resume so just bear with us while technology catches up with us <laughs> so i'm sure technology will come back where's she gone <laughs> Let's see. Oh, I don't know. Let's see. Oh, hang on. I think she's had to disappear a second. There we go. I should add her back in. There we go. Back to the technology issues again. Don't we love it? So, <laughs> so oh, Ellie, I've just seen you said you cancelled all your feeding support classes. Oh, gosh. Um, and Lois, you didn't have access to NCT classes both times. You were gutted. Do you know what? It's it's hard. Um, yeah, it really is difficult. Uh, let's see if we can get this back in. Approve. Um, I'll tell you something. Um, when we were just talking then about expressing, um, you know, I've got to give a huge shout out to Lois actually, who is watching right now, who with her first pumped right the way through. Um, she literally she you know she was she struggled with the whole um the whole breastfeeding um oh this guest already exists it says um and she literally she pumped and i'll say what i couldn't do it i could not do that i tried pumping it just did not happen um so yeah you've got i've got to give you your juice lois 
Um, let's just wait for it to come on. Let's see what's happening. So you don't need to hear me singing, do you? Right, so let's see. Approve. Let's see what's going on here. She can't bring Charlotte onto the camera. There is already a guest in the broadcast. Oh, for a year of expressing. Right, do we need to take you out of the broadcast and bring you back in? I don't know how we do that. So let's take you out. Uh, and let's see if I can add you in. No, so how do I... Oh, don't you just love this technology? Um, this time you're pumping and feeding, but you've donated most of it. Wow, that's amazing, Lois. Um, all right, no, nope, I don't need to type a comment in. Um, let's see. Da, 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 da. All right. Let's, see, let's try this again. It says that you're already there's already a guest in. So how do I get you out? <laughs> to add you in. Does anybody know? <laughs> oh, goodness me. Technology, eh? Goodness. Um, mm -hmm. Right, let's see. I don't know how to actually... Right, so if I, take, if I take it off and then turn it back on again. Right, let's try this again. Right, it's okay. Try again, Charlotte, because what I've done is I've turned guest reviewers off and then turned it back on, so maybe that might do it. Nope. Do -do 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 -do. Let's try this. It says, no, it still says that there's a guest in the broadcast. So how do I get you out? Um, okay, I'll tell you what you could try. Is if you come out of your, if you're on an iPhone, um, what you could possibly do, I don't know if we're going to be able to cut and copy this when we actually do the, the thing, is if you do it, so it's like, so, oh gosh, so if you shut it down, oh, I'm not on me, forget I'm not on that one, am I? Um, da, 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 da. If you shut it down properly, like swipe it up to the top and then go back into it, that might clear it. That's the only thing I can think of. Um, so if you're on like the the ones which are touch screen, swipe it away. So it's like um, let's have a think. How do I describe it? So you you know when you come up and you've got all your different tabs at the top, swipe it away and then log back in. It might should should refresh it maybe. It's the only thing I can think of. Um, I'm really not a fan of technology at all. Ask me anything about sleep and I'm absolutely fine. Technology absolutely clueless um let's see um let's see oh she's back in let's try this again no it says that you're already in oh i wonder if we can merge them so if we right i'll tell you what guys I'm going to hit the finish button, so this will end it, and then I'm just going to have to restart it. Is that all right, people? So if you come back onto the page and then just go back in, we'll 